Hi, I'm Nick Hyde from East Lyme Middle School. And me and my teammates, Noah Barnhart, Mikhail Lawale, and Brandon Hall, work to find the effectiveness of hydrogen peroxide on Aspergillus niger and microgravity. It started off as just an idea Mikhail had on, on finding a moldy yam and putting hydrogen peroxide on it and seeing if that would eliminate the mold spores. But it transformed to this huge project that eventually got to go up in space. And at the end of the project, we thought of a name for it, Think Outside the Tube. And if you watch the slideshow, I think you'll find out why. Our hypothesis was, does hydrogen peroxide eliminate mold in space? Well, it did so on Earth with Mackay Zam right over there. But at that time, it was an unknown mold. We, didn't, we just found it lying around. But now we have a, an exact mold, Aspergillus niger. And a yam would not fit into the tiny test tube that Nanorax made. So we needed to find an alternate food source for the mold. And we chose malt extract broth. And the process that the astronauts did before it came back down to Earth, three days before it came back down, they would break the mold ampule and the broth ampule and have the mold grow in the bro broth and then break the hydrogen peroxide ampule. So we were using a type three test tube. And here's my kind of more details about the project. This slide is titled Comparison of Experimental Designs because it is talking about from our moldy yam that we just did to the big experiment that went up into space. So first, the food type we started with was a yam, as Nick told you, and the mold had lots of food in the yam because it was a whole one, and we didn't know, as Nick said, what species it was, so, and we didn't know what the amount was because we just found it, and it had unlimited oxygen because it was just sitting around in the air, and we, the time for observation was limited too, because you could check it back on it whenever you wanted. And the concentration was 3%, which is a regular household percentage. And there was no pressure buildup because when the pressure came, it just went off into the air and it was gone. And for the final experiment, we changed the food to malt extract broth, which was be good because it was better, it was easier to mix than a yam. And it had f four milliliters of malt extract broth in the test tube, which was bad because the mold may starve. And we changed the mold to Aspergillus niger, and this is better because it was a single species and it was safe to handle, and it's like non-toxic. And we changed it to 80 colony forming units, which are the spores, and this was better because it was an exact control and it came in a solid tablet. And the oxygen, it only had 3.32 milliliters in the small tube, unlike the moldy yam. And this was bad because the mold's a living organism, and it needs air just like you and me, so the mold may suffocate and die as it grows. And we had only about two weeks for observations, so this was bad because we need to activate tube as late as possible, so the mold doesn't overpopulate the FME and die. And the concentration started with 30%, but it got, diluted by, it got diluted by the mold extract broth to 5%. This was good because it was unchanged. And there was pressure buildup in the test tube, this was good and bad because it may cause the FME to leak, but it also provides oxygen for the mold. After flight analysis, this is what we would do when we got the results back. So first, we just looked at the clear solution. Was the um, solution clear or cloudy? And then we do the agar plate test, where we put the solution on the agar plate, and then we heat it up for 11 days, and after 11 days, we check back up on it and inspect it and see if there's clear black fuzz. Now, Noah will tell you about the results. So these are the results based on the solution appearance. As you can see, the ISF, ISS FME is clear, which shows that it probably had no mold growth, which supported our hypothesis. In the ground control peroxide, we did not think that would grow, and it didn't, so that was also good. But as you can see, the ground control with um, water um, we thought that one would grow, and the cloudiness is what we the mold was, so that was also support our hypothesis. And these are the results based on the culture and agar plate appear, uh, test, 
which is what it actually is because that way we know if there's even because even if there's one mode sport it shows up on the plate and the mode tablet control it shows a picture of how small the actual tablet is but it still c can create a lot of mold as you can see on the agar plate below the mold tablet control and the iss epitome was clear in the um solution appearance but the agar plate contradictory hypothesis because of one factor that changed our experiment, which was the FME leaked. So that meant that we could no longer have definite results if it, if it um, killed the mold. And Brandon will tell you later about um, how the mold was killed and how we know there was mold and it leaked. And the ground control peroxide, it supported our hypothesis which was good and even with the agar plate. But the ground control with water contradicted our hypothesis, even though it only had mold water and the mold extract broth, which was the food for the mold. And the reason why we thought this happened was not because it leaked, but the mold ran out of food, so it started eating the other spores in order to keep alive. And that's why it was cloudy and not there wasn't like black fuzz. And here's Brandon with the conclusion. As you can see over here, this is an FME2 with black fuzz. That black fuzz is Aspergillus niger, the mold we use for this experiment. As you can see over here, the technician is pouring the results for the FME2 into a clear plastic bowl. We believe that is where the contamination started. Based on the solution appearance test, hydrogen peroxide will eliminate mold in space. But when the scientists put the ISS FME into the culture tube, it contaminated the opening of the plastic valve, as I mentioned on the other slide. Culture plates did not confirm the solution appearance test due to improper sterilization, and water ground control cells died because they ran out of food and air. If we were to do this again, we would tighten the FME cap to better hold pressure, and we would sterilize the outside of the tube before opening. And here are the people we would love to acknowledge. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions for, uh, this is team from East Lyme, Connecticut. So I'm Paula DiDiego, I'm from um, Massachusetts. First of all, boys, you did a wonderful job. I think that was really remarkable and you spoke very clearly. Um, I do have a question about, is that a harmful or a helpful mold? Um, the mold is harmful to the astronauts because we don't, if it gets in their water supply, that'd be bad. And, and the, if it got in the oxygen tank, if they breathed it in, that'd be bad. So we are trying to kill it with hydrogen peroxide, which we chose because it's, it's, hydro, it's hi, two particles, hydrogen, two particles, oxygen, which means it decomposes, it's environmentally friendly, so it doesn't hurt the astronauts with other chemicals. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sadie Wright from Massachusetts. I wanted to know if you guys sent your um, project up in space. Yes. <laughs> um, I just want to say that, that uh, you gentlemen, future doctors, are grades five and six. Is that correct? You did a phenomenal job. Well, let's thank the team from East Lyme, Connecticut.